The top stories tonight in Y News. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. signs a service contract for the renewal agreement for the Malampaya Deepwater Gas to Power project. The National Bureau of Investigation seeks to file complaints against suspended Negros Oriental 3rd District Representative Arnolfo Tevis Jr. before the Department of Justice on Wednesday. Military and police institutions share concern on the impact of the impending reform in the pension system of military and uniformed personnel. And Ukraine claims they have no plans to target locations within Russian territory. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, the 15th of May, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV news and rescue social media channels. I am Harleen Delgado. First in the news, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said his administration is committed to ensuring energy security in the country as he signed service contract 38 renewal agreement for the Malampaya Deepwater Gas to Power project. Nel Maribohok reports. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. extended the production at the Malampaya gas field for 15 years in a renewal deal signed on Monday. He said the renewed SC38 will generate more revenues for the government given that the Malampaya gas project has generated a total of 374 billion pesos of revenues since the project started in 1990. Because of the contract renewal, the government will continue to generate revenues from the project through a favorable sharing scheme with a private sector partner and the government. Needless to say, this project will reduce our dependence on oil imports and will ensure a more stable supply of cleaner energy from an indigenous local source. The Malampaya project will reduce the country's dependence on oil imports and ensure a more stable supply of cleaner energy from an indigenous source. The chief executive said considering the projects as the key to the administration's drive towards energy security, it is also consistent with the constitution and the state policy of hastening discovery and production of the country's indigenous petroleum. As I sign this SC38 renewal agreement, we also lay stress on the administration's commitment to actively pursuing the exploration, development, and utilization of the country's indigenous energy resources and to optimize our energy mix. Under SC38, the Malampaya Consortium is required to conduct geological and geophysical studies and the drilling of at least two deep water wells covered by subphase one from 2024 to 2029. It also required the conduct of exploratory drilling away from the Malampaya production area within the service contract for the consortium to retain the exploration areas, else relinquish a portion. Nel Maribuho, UN TV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The filing of complaints against suspended Negro Oriental 3rd District Representative Arnolfo Davis Jr. before the Department of Justice or DOJ did not push through today. Dante Amento tells us why. Department of Justice or DOJ Secretary Crispin Boying Rimulia revealed that six of the suspects in the Digamo killing have been provided with lawyers and it is expected that they will recant or withdraw their initial sworn affidavits. Many of them had lawyered up already by this time. Of meaning by lawyered up, they were provided with lawyers by some people who are paying for their lawyers who were not there before. And obviously, there's some, some people are interested in uh, the statements that they want to give, and uh, now they don't want to cooperate anymore with the authorities. Hence, the National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, needs to revisit some records to strengthen the case. 
However, Rimulia believes that this will not affect the case. The filing of complaints against the suspended congressman will take place on Wednesday instead. The secretary added that if Congressman Tevez does not return to the country after the complaints are filed against him, the case will be immediately elevated to the court. So he's not going home within the next two weeks would be critical to the filing of the case within the next two weeks. If he doesn't go home, we will pursue. Uh, we will immediately file a case against him. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, through its Election and Barangay Department, may start filing complaints against individuals who have double or multiple registration records within this month. COMELEC spokesperson Director John Rex Laudianco stated that those who intentionally commit this violation will be removed from the voters list before the October 2023 Barangay and Sagunian Kabataan elections. Laudianco added that being a double or multiple registrant is a serious offense that can be penalized by six years of imprisonment or perpetual disqualification from voting or running for public office. O dun sa mga talagang sinadya na magdouble or multiple registrants yung ibang pangalan na ginamit or nag-iba ng itsura, yung iba po nagsusuot pa ng kung ano-ano, nagpapatubo ng bigote, asahan po ninyo na isasagawa ng COMELEC ang aming preliminary investigation at kakasuhan po namin kayo ng election offense. The COMELEC disclosed that the number of double or multiple registrants might reach 500,000 before the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan or SK polls. The Philippine National Police or PNP confirms that the promotion of 917 third-level officers is underway. This comes after the five-man advisory group cleared their names of any possible involvement in illegal drugs. The advisory group has recommended not accepting the courtesy resignations of the 917 officers and further investigating the 32 other officers. PNP spokesperson Police Colonel Jean Fajardo stated that the Deputy Chief of Administration assured that the 917 officials will receive the promotion they deserve, especially if they are not facing any charges. With respect po doon sa mga nakapending po na promotion but kasama at na-cleared na po sila, uh, we don't see any reason po unless of course uh, magkakaroon po ng panibagong uh, issue at uh, magkakaroon po ng uh, pagkaantala sa promotion nila. But no less than yung ating DCA po, siya po kasi yung chairman ng ating uh, senior uh, place, uh, officer placement and promotion board. So hopefully po, ma-expedite po yung mga napending po na promotion. Meanwhile, the National Police Commissioner Napolcom has yet to complete the reinvestigation of the 32 police senior officials. The five-man advisory group recommended that the 32 senior officials undergo further investigation to determine if they are involved in illegal drugs. Military and police institutions expressed concern on the impact of the impending reform in the pension system of military and uniformed personnel. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. The Senate Committee on National Defense opened today the hearing on the proposed reform in the pension system of military and uniformed personnel or MUP. Earlier, Finance Secretary Benjamin Jokno warned that the current pension system may lead to fiscal collapse. Senate Bill 284 seeks to create a retirement fund authority for a unified system on separation, retirement and pension of military and uniformed personnel. National Treasurer Rosalia de Leon says the pension spending will further balloon should the current system continue. <laughs> Kaya sinasabi naman po na fiscal collapse, ang sinasabi lang po natin, kung hindi po tayo a-action ngayon, palaki po ng palaki yung pong pensyon na kinakain ng budget. Hindi lang po kami na-alarma na dumalaki ang binabay sa pensyon, mas na-alarma po kami na yung pong pensyon, mas malaki pa po sa dinagasos natin ng capital outlay ng ating participants. 
De Leon adds the Department of Finance proposes that the reform in the pension system be applied both for active service and new entrants. But MUP agencies want to limit the reform system to new entrants. The Department of National Defense appeals to lawmakers to consider the impact of the impending reform to the morale of the country's military force. We would like, want to appeal to our honorable senators that uh, we should you know, we should really look uh, on the possible uh, middle ground that we can really see uh, the, that uh, the moral uh, welfare of our people will be uh, will be taken care of. DND officer in charge, Senior Undersecretary Carlito Galvez Jr. also recommends to increase the optional retirement from at least 20 years to 25 to 30 years. This as he cited the growing number of military members retiring from service since 2018. Galvez fears that the proposed pension system reform would further cause more optional retirement from their ranks. <laughs> Ang nai-anticipate namin, ang mag-forecast namin, 70% of those who have 20 years already will have, will, will, will be option to, to, to retire this year or maybe before the enactment of the new law. The Philippine National Police also shares the same sentiment. Citing data, the PNP says out of its 18,000 retirees from 2018 to 2022, 65% of them were optional retirees. Marami na ang lumalabas sa amin dahil natakot na sila sa inyong potensyo na pinag-usapan natin ngayon. At itong mga tao na ito, sorry, are mga senior uh, officers and senior PNCO, sila yung mga nag-schooling na, may training na, may mga wisdom na sila sa papatakbo ng organization natin. At uh, gusto na lang lumabas to avail of the old uh, pension program. Talagang brain drain ito, hemorrhage ito ng utak uh, ng uh, ating uh, MUP. Eh, itong mga tao na ito, they are all... Uh, Highly trained. Tapos hindi mo ito, one, hindi ito one is to one eh. Kung mayroong isang uh, senior officer o senior PNCO na mag-retire, hindi ito ka-equivalent sa isang new entrant na isang patrulban na papasok. The Senate panel's chairperson, Jingoy Estrada, directed both government's economic team and the MUP institutions to review their proposals and submit all relevant data to the technical working group that will trash out the details of the proposal in a bid to strike a balance. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Foreign News Abroad after securing a massive new defense aid package from Germany, Ukraine says it has no plans to target locations within Russian territory. Ruth Bahe explains why live. Good evening, Ruth. Good evening, Elsie. After talks in Berlin with Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky states that their main focus is preparing for a counterattack to the occupy the territories Russia illegitimately occupied. This comes after accusations from the Kremlin that Kyiv is repeatedly targeting locations within Russia, in addition to the reported drone attack allegedly aimed at assassinating President Vladimir Putin. Ukraine has consistently denied such claims and emphasizes its right to use force to retake the four regions in the south and east, as well as the Crimean Peninsula. Meanwhile, Germany has promised to support Ukraine for as long as necessary through the supply of weapons worth 2.7 billion euros. This includes advanced German Leopard tanks and additional anti-aircraft systems to help bolster Ukraine's defense against the daily missile strikes by Russia. Back to you, LC. Thank you, Ruth Bahe, reporting live from Vietnam. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, Harleen. Thank you, LC. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The Department of Agriculture is looking into setting another suggested retail price for onions. An agricultural group urges the government to plan for the importation of the commodity. Ray Palayo will tell us why. The prices of red onions are now more than double compared to last year. The Department of Agriculture will meet with stakeholders this week to trace where in the value chain the price increase occurs. 
So ngayon, tinitingnan na natin after mabenta ng ating magsasaka, sinong bumili at gaano katagal, uh, paano po binenta ng trader yung pag-release niya ng kanyang stocks sa cold storage facilities. Implementing a suggested retail price is also one of the options for the Department of Agriculture to halt the price increase. SRP in the past was also a way for us to temper the price, di ba? Uh, para siyang price guide, kumbaga. And at the same time, it helped us also find out kung kanino binibili ni retailer yung kanyang binibentang sibuyas. Di sa mahang industriya ng agrikultura, recommends the importation of at least 7,500 metric tons of white onions. However, the actual inventory needs to be determined for a more accurate assessment of the additional volume required. Uh, we don't see na may kulang sa red. Kahit last year naman eh, uh, may merong assumption na kulang kasi nga ginamit yung red ng mga end users, yung mga restaurants, sinabstitute sa white. Kaya may seeming kakulangan sa red. DA assures that the timing of importation will be planned to avoid a repeat of the onion crisis that occurred last year. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The country's household population reached its 109 million as of 2020, according to the Commission on Population and Development. Meanwhile, half of the population is aged 25 years old and below. Bernadette Tinoy will tell us why. The Commission on Population and Development, or CPD, announced the latest population figure, recording a total of 109.4 million in 2020. The population of May 1, 2020, is nasa 109.04 million. Na po tayo. According to the CPD, 99.7% or 108.6 million of the total population belongs to the household population. This means that these individuals or groups of people live together in a household unit with common arrangements for the preparation and consumption of food. The remaining 0.3% belongs to the institutional population, including embassies and other institutions, as stated by Joseph Cajita, the Chief Statistical Specialist of the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA. The average household size in the country decreased from 4.5% in 2015 to 4.1% in 2020. He added that half of the population is aged 25 years old and below. So, nasa 25.3 years po tayo, which means that half of the population is younger than 25.3 years. Meanwhile, more than 9 million of the population belongs to senior citizens, with 5,120,078 being women and 4,102,594 being men. The CPD added that for the percent distribution of the household population aged 10 years old and over, 39.7% of the population were unmarried or single, while 39.2% were married. Additionally, 14.7% were live in relationships, 4.5% were widow, and 1.9% were divorced or separated. Kahita reiterates that the purpose of the data is for the government to provide proper service to the public. Para maintindihan natin yung mga marriage trends and then when combined with other data, matitingnan natin no? para maintindihan yung mga available social services lalo na sa pag-community and then ano yung mga programs na no? which kinakailangan uh, ng ating mga constituents. The Census of Population and Housing, or CPH, was carried out over a five-year period. Bernadette Tinoy, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Banka Central ng Pilipinas or BSP has announced an increase in personal remittances from overseas Filipinos or RF to 2.97 billion US dollars. This is 3% higher than the 2.89 billion US dollars recorded in the same month last year. The BSP stated that that can be attributed to higher remittances sent by land-based workers with work contracts of one year or more, as well as sea and land-based workers with work contracts of less than one year.
In other news, Grab Philippines plans to evaluate its legal options regarding the 9 million peso fine imposed by the Philippine Competition Commission for reimbursement delay. JP Nunez will tell us why. Philippine Competition Commission or PCC has decided to impose an additional fine on Grab Philippines due to its failure to fully refund its customers for over three years since the initial reimbursement order was issued by the department. The latest fine is in addition to the 63.7 million peso penalties previously imposed by the PCC on Grab Philippines. Grab has been instructed to establish an alternative refund mechanism to facilitate the remaining refunds for its customers. In a resolution dated February 2, 2023, the PCC imposed a 6 million peso fine on Grab for violating three separate commission orders which required the company to return a combined amount of 25.45 million pesos to its customers. The same resolution also imposed a 3 million peso fine on Grab for providing incorrect and misleading information in compliance reports submitted by the company regarding the refund orders. In those reports, Grab falsely claimed that it had completed the refund process. However, the PCC's review revealed a different outcome. In a statement, Grab Philippines express surprise over the PCC's decision to impose fines as the company has been actively engaging in proposals for alternative mechanisms to disburse the remaining administrative fees over the course of a year. Nonetheless, Grab Philippines stated that it will comply with the PCC's order to implement the alternative refund mechanism as required. The company also mentioned that it will evaluate its legal options in response to impose 9 million peso fine. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. In celebration of National Hypertension Awareness Month, the Philippine Society of Hypertension urges the public to regularly check their blood pressure to prevent complications caused by hypertension. Gladys Tuabi will tell us why. Various complications such as heart attack, heart failure, and even kidney failure are caused by hypertension. However, people with high blood pressure may not experience any symptoms unless their blood pressure is being checked. Akala ng iba, dahil wala silang nararamdaman, wala silang high blood pressure. Sa totoo, ang high blood pressure, karaniwan, wala namang nararamdaman, dahan-dahan kasi tumataas, dahan-dahan. Particularly sa atin, Pilipi sa atin na Pilipino, mahilig tayo sa salty food, no? madyo maalat, kaya prone tayo talaga sa pagtaas ng blood pressure. According to the World Health Organization or WHO, 46% of adults with hypertension are unaware that they have the condition. In line with this, the Philippine Society of Hypertension encourages the public to have their blood pressure checked. The month of May is a celebration of the National Hypertension Awareness Month, and the PSH invites the public to participate in the nationwide measuring of blood pressure starting on May 17. This initiative is open to individuals who are 18 years old and above. Experts say that by regularly checking and monitoring your blood pressure and adopting a healthy lifestyle, you can prevent complications caused by hypertension. So, napaka-importante na ang ating mga kababayan ay magpa-measure ng kanilang blood pressure. Kasi yung mga deaths na about 30,000 people all over the world dying dahil sa hypertension, preventable kasi yon dahil may mga gamot tayo, may mga lifestyle changes na pwede na gawin ng isang taong may mataas na blood pressure. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Upon developing into a Category 5 storm, the catastrophic cyclone Mocha met the coastlines of Bangladesh and Myanmar, causing significant damage across both countries. The cyclone had passed through Bangladesh by late Sunday, May 14, resulting in no major damages and no casualties. However, the area is still experiencing landslides and floods. On the other hand, Myanmar was hit the worst, with five people dead, including a 14-year-old boy 
boy who was reportedly killed by a falling tree. Buildings, homes, and communities were torn apart across the country. Meanwhile, the Red Cross Society of Myanmar has been preparing for an emergency response. Fortunately for those in Bangladesh, approximately 750,000 people had been evacuated prior to the cyclone's arrival. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. A lawmaker wants an inquiry into the series of disturbances in the power transmission system of the country. Senator Sherwin Gachalian filed a resolution seeking to conduct an investigation on the issue to ensure a reliable and continuous electricity supply. The senator says successive disturbances in the country's power transmission system caused inconvenience to communities and business losses. Gachalian adds the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines, or NGCP, should be held to a account being the operator of the country's transmission system. Meanwhile, Senators J.V. Ejercito and Senate Deputy Minority Leader Risa Honteveros want the Philippines to regain its full control of the NGCP. This as they express concern on the 40% stake of State Grid of China and the transmission system operator amid the country's maritime dispute with China. We have to find ways. We are talking about national uh, interest, patrimony, and uh, more importantly, national security. Maraming paraan naman siguro para itong mga vital utilities, which again, I would, re uh, uh, I would reiterate, has a national interest, uh, national security issues, has to remain under the control of the Philippine government or even, or at least the Philippine Corporation. Pinag-aaralan pa namin kung ano yung pinaka-okay na paraan na mapasa kamay ulit 100% na yung mga, sa ating mga Pilipino ang NGCP. Kung kailangan pa bang bilihin ito o ano pa ba yung mga tamang paraan ayon sa ating mga batas o ayon kaugnay din ang existing na uh, pagdata nila. Pero uh, basta ang uh, uh, objective din ay mapasa kamay natin ulit ang isang uh, national grid. The Philippine Coast Guard, or PCG, utilized five vessels to install buoys in the West Philippine Sea last week. These vessels include BRP Corregidor, BRP Teresa Magbanwa, BRP Malabrigo, BRP Malapascua, BRP Lapulapo of the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. According to PCG Commandant Admiral Artemio Abu, having more ships would greatly assist in safeguarding the West West Philippine Sea and other territorial waters of the country. National Security Advisor Eduardo Año expressed his support for the PCG's modernization program, a cause that other legislators are also advocating for. He emphasized that apart from the PCG's various missions, such as responding to pandemics, calamities, oil spills, fires, and sunken ships, its primary duty is to protect the sovereignty of the country. We are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of Members Church of God International. And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 7 to 8, it says, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer, and above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. And those are the reasons behind the news May 15, 2023. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harden Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.